we're going to move forward with Robert's Rule of Order by Dr. Warren McDonald. Thank you. Can you see me on the screen? We see you. Yep. Can you see the screen? No. Uh, okay, at the bottom of the page, you should be yeah, able to I'm hit. It, 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 it's, it looks like it's going off. Now, can you, at the bottom of the screen, it says share screen. There well, you go. Now it's coming. There you go. Have mercy. Have mercy. We're there. All right. We got it on. So we're going to talk about Robert's Rules of Order. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. So there's more than one rule. So we're going to get all the rules if that's okay. Why, why do you, why do we study this? Why do we waste time? Why do we make up our own rules? Listen, let me tell you something. Robert's rules of order have been around a long time. They're designed to assure the rights of every individual in a group are maintained and that each legitimate voice is heard to aid in the proper functioning of organizations and assemblies. Now, what is a legitimate voice? Uh, according to General Roberts, who wrote this book in 1907, it's, it is somebody who is a legitimate member, registered person, who, someone who has the legal right to be there. They just came out in 2020 with the last, uh, the most recent edition, uh, the 12th. I looked online today, and, and they're pretty expensive. West, they're about 15 bucks. So uh, I, I encourage any of you that doesn't have a copy that to get one, but I've got something special for you at the end that will help you along the way too. Now, hey, they don't have a version for dummies, do they? I'm sorry? They don't have a version for dummies, do they? I could use that. I didn't, I didn't hear you, sir. <laughs> Actually, there is a copy, Wes. There is a copy. It's Robert's <laughs> Rule of Order for Dummies. Oh my God, that's what I've I I've got a cheat sheet on the way to everybody at the end. It's pretty easy to use. Right, I've so got that book if you want to borrow it, Wes. Here is the deal. It, this is the standard for facilitation of groups and group decision making. I bet most of you have been in a meeting where the loudest person in the room pretty much controlled the conversation. Anybody had that experience? I'll bet you have. What's, what's really hard is when you get in a tense situation, and I'll tell you about a personal one that I had that kind of got me in this thing for the uh, opticians folks. Uh, I, I've been the parliamentarian for a, a political party for the state of North Carolina, and some of the stuff I did, we actually wound up in court over, and, and we won. They're simple rules. They're not hard that they'll help your group have better meetings, not make them more difficult if you simply know how to use those rules. Now, where did it come from? Like every law, and Robert's Rules is not a law, it's a rule, but it's based on English parliamentary law. When we came over from England, after the Revolutionary War, we were setting up our legal system that was based on parliamentary law there. It's used in small and large organizations. I learned it in a local civic club called JCs, and the United States Congress uses it every single day. There's an old uh, Henry Fonda movie, Mr. Something or Other Went to Washington. Anybody remember that movie? You've heard recently about a thing called a filibuster, correct? Filibuster means that if someone gets up to the microphone and they're recognized, you, the chair, the assembly does not have the ability, or the right, to stop until it's done the right way. And sometimes that can be, be very difficult. But it does provide the assembly, the organization, with the system to, to be more efficient carrying out its business. And the most important part of that is that everybody gets heard. A few basic rules. Uh, 
You don't have to be an expert. You need to learn how to open and close meetings and to handle just a few simple procedural situations and you'll be in good shape. Once you learn those rules, it becomes pretty much standard to you and it simplifies the business of the organization. And again, most important of all is that legitimate voices have a right to be heard and this assures that that happens. Personal story. I've been doing this stuff for a long time and I went to the OAA meeting. Wes, that's probably before your time. Uh, Donna, you, you might have been there with the OAA and the NAO. Some of the, some of both groups wanted to merge. You remember that meeting? I do remember that, sir. Well, it was a difficult, it was a difficult meeting. And, and uh, bless their hearts, neither one of the presidents knew how to run a meeting. But one guy was taken aside by one of his folks and he said, look, I'm going to call the question. That means you've got to go right to a vote. Many people believe that's the truth. It's not. They had a lawyer sitting on stage. They required it. Parliamentarian, they called him. Here's what happened. One of the guys from the academy who wanted to merge they started talking about it. He stands up. I call the question. Chair pounds that gavel. It's time to vote. Everybody sit down. Well, I jumped up to the microphone and said, uh, point of order, Mr. Chairman. You'll see what that means in a minute. I beg your pardon? He said, sit down. The parliamentarian said, no, you have to recognize. If someone calls a point of order, you'll see in a moment. You have to be recognized. It got out of, listen, I told the president that what, what calling for the question meant. And he had to drop back and punt. And guess what? The merger didn't happen. They had the votes all lined up. It, it went away and it needed to. Simple rules. It's not hard. I promise. You work from an agenda. If you go to a meeting, uh, some of you, look, all of you are now leaders. You stepped up to the plate. You volunteered to serve. And that is a wonderful. And I thank you for it. But have, a, have an agenda. How you set the agenda is usually uh, that the, many organizations have a standard set pattern for an agenda. It's set by the chairman, but usually in consultation with the other officers uh, and, and maybe a, a committee member. You got to allow sufficient time. I know that many of you have also been to room, in, in rooms when one person tried to dominate, you get into a debate and a person keeps jumping up and down and correcting everybody. It just, it, it doesn't have to be that way. That, they can be ruled out of order and it's important that you understand how to do that. You can set time limits for debate on any particular or discussion on any particular item that you choose. That has to be moved and seconded, and a two-thirds majority of those in attendance have to agree to that, that time limit. Now, you don't want it to be 30 seconds or a minute and a half if you've got an important thing, but you, you need to set time limits to keep people from dragging it out. Now, debate can be limited, but only by two-thirds of the assembly. The beginning of the agenda, you, you, you welcome folks. I've got a sample uh, later on in the presentation. But you, you, you welcome folks. You have a prayer if you like. You, you read the minutes from the last meeting and you move on. Then you get into the business that you're there to do. When you introduce business to the organization, a motion must be made uh, by a legitimate member to introduce the topic unless it's a, a standing committee report. Now, what's a standing committee? Anyone know? It's existing. It continues to exist. An adjunct committee is time bound or project bound. Committee reports are included as part of the agenda and do not require a second. No member should be recognized a second time on the same topic until every a party that wants to, to speak to it has, has been addressed. Have you ever heard that before? 
most of the time people are surprised at that. Uh, you, people aren't supposed to dominate the discussion. That's what we mean by everyone having a voice. And the chair's job is to make sure that's done. Once recognized by the floor, the speaker has it, and he or she can't be interrupted with the exceptions of a point of order. Somebody can rise to a point of order, the chair gavels the discussion closed momentarily, and we vote. Two-thirds have to say, hey, it's it's we're done we're, we're out of procedure time can be an issue so make sure you you have it developed the right way and understand how to control it a second you all know what a second means a motion isn't valid until seconded by a second member and clearly now listen to this this is in, in the rules is it always followed no should it be absolutely Somebody should be taking down these minutes. They are legal documents. The chair or designated party, possibly the secretary, should then read that, that motion back to make sure it's recorded correctly and heard right by the, by the body. Keep in mind, a second is required for most actions to be considered. Table. Have you ever been in a room and they keep talking and, and you just get tired and there's obviously no answer going to be solved? We're not going to reach a consensus. If you get, listen, maybe it's a worthy thing that you, that, that you just think might have some value, but you're not going to sell it today. Make a motion to place it on the table. That ends discussion. The second's required, but it's not debatable and cannot be amended. An affirmative vote can't be immediately reconsidered. Either. Now, it, later in the meeting, you can bring it back off the table, and that's happened a lot of times. It depends on the original motion. Does that make any sense? Questions on that? This is the big one, man. It, it, and, it, and it blew my mind when people, it, pe people don't understand what Calling for the question means the question uh, is that this one individual is ready to vote on that original motion. It's been seconded. There's been a lot of discussion. I move to the question. That doesn't mean but one person. The chair should then turn to the body and say, is there questions been called? Is there any further discussion from the body? If anybody else wants to talk a little more, they raise their hand and they're recognized, and it keeps on until a second person gets tired of hearing it. I move to the previous question. Takes two thirds of the majority in the room. If it passes, discussion is over and you vote on the motion. Does that make sense? Objections to consideration. If someone puts a motion forward, it's the chair's responsibility to make sure that the rules are followed. Your organization has, I've got a copy of the OAA bylaw. Most of y'all should have it. If the rules aren't being followed, then, then someone can object. If a member notices a breach of rules that was not recognized by the chair, it's their right to rise to a point of order. That has to be acted on by the chair. You cannot, you just can't wave it off. You have to recognize it. And if there's no clear answer to the point being raised, the chair is uncertain. Consult someone who knows, a point of parliamentarian who's prepared. Amendments. Man. We're going through an amendment to the Constitution of uh, of North Carolina right now. Motions to amend can be placed on the on, on the table after a motion has been made and seconded. During the debate, if someone in the group decides that, hey, this is good, but I think it ought to be changed a little bit that way, by golly, make the amendment. They usually occur some after some discussion or debate. And uh, once the amendment is acted on, 
then the original motion is called a vote. It is a simple majority of the people uh, present. And then once that amendment is voted on, then you move to the original motion as changed by the amendment. Some things require two thirds of the body. Some, some things require only a simple majority. Two thirds, if you want to suspend the rule. All right, so we have, what? give, give me a rule that you know in your state association or the OAA that's pretty consistent. Give me one rule. You have to have a quorum to have a meeting. Is that a rule? I didn't hear you. Say it again. You have to have a quorum to have a meeting. Well, that that's uh, you that that's one thing. That's a good one. That's exactly right. A quorum. If 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 it states that a quorum is X percent of the membership, and you don't have it, you can in some cases take a motion to suspend the rules. All right, so, uh, an example of my former JC chapters. We had money in certain pots that we raised. We were doing a, we we're building a burn center at UNC Chapel Hill. And um, Wendy, are you still here, honey? If, if that's the home of basketball, UNC Chapel. Yeah. Good girl. So if, if, if you, if, if somebody wants to spend some money for something else, here here's a valid thing. One time we had a we had a Marine Corps family whose house burned down at Christmas time. Well, we had raised a bunch of money, a hundred thousand or so, for, for the burn center, and and a bunch of us decided that the the, the dad was a member of our JC chapter. He was a uh, Lieutenant Colonel of Marines, and you know he could have been all right, but we we suspended our rules for the purpose of spending money that it wasn't allocated to to begin with. Okay, or there could be special orders to do something extraordinary that is not typically considered. For example, if 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 um, the OAA wanted to do something new and different, that needed to be acted on by the membership, special orders could be done. You could amend the, uh, the rules of your assembly. You can set, close, or extend time limits, object to the consideration of a motion. So, uh, the motion that was made to, to merge the OAA and, and National Academy, this is way back in the early 80s, I believe, and it, it, it was placed on the table despite it not really being allowed to be there. And, and I, I object, Mr. Chair, and he and it, it went away. You have to learn how to do it. And the parliamentarian sit right next to the president. President, well, why didn't you tell me? You have to ask me, sir. I'm not allowed to inject without your questions. Did you hear that? You don't have to be, Mr. President, Mrs. President, you don't have to be the expert. Have someone sitting next to you and call on them when you need them. Two thirds of vote is also required to, to close the vote when someone calls and moves to the previous question. Committee reports. Committee report. You got a finance committee. How many committee, uh, Wendy, how many committees do you have in your state group? Maybe eight. So each uh, so each of them give a vote uh, 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 give a uh, a committee report right that you meet in your agenda yeah you don't have to have a second for that right committee memberships are usually determined by the president the board or other board governing body of your organization and that should be spelled out in the bylaw Here's a sample agenda for you folks. This comes from, uh, this comes straight out of Robert's old rules. Joe Roberts was an army officer in the war and it, uh, he, he didn't like the way civilians did business. So he wrote 
he, he wrote Robert Fool because of, he said it was too out of, out of place. There, there was just no semblance. I mean, the, the bullies could run the meetings. In this case, if you know how to use the rules and follow them, everybody's voice gets heard. So the sample agenda is to call the meeting to order. Notice that Donna did that by on time and noted the time and the minutes. Some meetings, if if they are of, uh, if, if they if they pray or have a religious connotation, they take times the prayer, salute the flag. Very important are the secretary's reports. The minute of the last meeting require a vote. All right, now remember uh, earlier in the session, I told you about a couple things. First, once a motion is made by a member of the body, it should be written down by somebody and repeated by the chair or the chair's designee, usually the secretary. It should be loud enough so everyone can hear it, okay? Then it needs a simple majority vote. Treasurer's report. Talk about the money. If, if an organization is going to have trouble, it usually surrounded by money. Committee reports, and if there's new business to come before the group, anyone in the organization has the right to bring new business before. And if they're smart and want to get things done, my golly, they do a little homework coming in and talk to folks. You've all experienced it. I know you have. Old business, what's left hanging on the table from last time. And then announcements, and then time for a drink. That's a sample you can follow. Uh, you, use your own template, but make sure that you do things the right way. Now, Robert's rules are, are, are rules. They're not a law. They're not the law of land, but if a court case arose over the conduct of business. Now, could that happen? Has the OAA ever been threatened? Absolutely. Some of you might be shocked to know that we would not let people who work for corporate providers join our state associations for the longest time. No comment. What would happen if we did that now? The corporate, their biggest, their biggest employers now, the independent. When I got out of optician school at Durham Tech, when the dinosaurs were just leaving, uh, everybody was independent. We went out and opened our little offices and we did that. Nowadays, the world's changed. I spoke with a man yesterday named Dean Butler. Did anybody remember him? Dean yep. Butler started yep. lens crafters. It was called Precision Lens Crafters at first. Why did they change the name? Anyone know? Chris? You know? Probably the wording on precision. Huh? Probably the wording with precision. Let me tell you. Precision didn't have anything to do with it. The, 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 the thing said glasses in an hour. Well, some <clears throat> New York lawyer came in there and he had to wait an hour and a half to get his glasses he sued. And he, and he won. So they changed the name from Precision Lens Crafters to, to, to Lens Crafters Glasses in about an hour. Things like this, silly things can happen, but sometimes, let me tell you something. There's a local church that's in the middle of a real hassle right now because the, the board of uh, overseers of the church, whatever they call it, the Presbyterian church, they're fighting with each other over how to spend the money on their building, building a new building. It's going to court, the church people. This is a rule, not a law. So what's important about it? Congress, my General Assembly, your General Assembly, everybody uses it. I told you about the NAOOAA merger. That would have gone, I guarantee you, Dick Davenport, some of the guys, that would have been a court case. 
Robert's Rules is a standard by which uh, we all operate. It guides the fair and effective transaction of business for all of us. And it's an important thing to remember. Now think about this for a minute. Your board members, your leaders, did you do you realize you can be held liable for your actions? You're an official representative of an organization. That's hard enough to recruit you, I shouldn't tell you all. But you, you, you deserve to know. Keep accurate minutes, have them approved in the correct fashion at each meeting. If, uh, for example, I'm on the board of trustees and I work for health system, we have millions of dollars of insurance for, for each member of our board. I don't know that it's necessary for you. But it's something to consider if, they, if you get in a tense situation. Again, Robert's rules aren't a law, but it's important for you to understand it's a guideline for all parties that can protect you and the organizations that you serve. Really important part. Listen, it's good to know this process. If you can follow these slides, and I've got a, a little thing uh, coming to you by mail. Now I was going to email the slides, and, and, and I'm going to call it a cheat sheet. It's a summary of Robert's rules in one page that goes over everything I've talked about on these slides tonight. And if you're new at leading organizations, don't let it concern you. There it is. It's written out for you, and it's, it's simple and easy to use. I asked permission from the people who wrote it, and they said, by all means. This is Robert's Rules of Order, folks. The 12th edition is brand new. It came out in 1907. Been around a long time. Ain't going nowhere. I looked online for the cost. Uh, there's some used ones out there. It, even even the, the, the 20, uh, this is 2020. $5.95 or something like that for a used one. You can get a brand new one for 15 bucks. Invest in it. Follow it, but take that simple little chart and use it. Any questions for me? Thank you, folks. I've certainly been in, I, I've, I've enjoyed doing these these presentations, I, and I thank you guys for stepping up to the plate and and taking a leadership position. Donna, thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. I want to thank everybody. For Can't hear coming. you, honey. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I want to thank.